Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So uh, I'm going to talk about the best ways that you can help yourself to make sure you get sharp images in this video. Because believe it or not, even the most seasoned photographer still blurs some of their work. I do it quite regularly. You know, a lot of my personal use of photography when I go out on my walks and stuff, obviously I'm walking around and I'm holding my camera handheld. And there is nothing worse when I think I've taken an absolute banger. It looks okay on the back of the camera, but by the time I've get it back into Lightroom, I can see that I've slightly misjudged something. So it's not exactly pin sharp as I hoped it would be. So, um, so yeah, so throughout the years of doing this and obviously watching a lot of YouTube videos and talking to friends, you know, I've come up with a couple of tips and tricks to make sure that I can do the very best in making sure that my photos are very, very sharp and they're in focus and they look good. So that way I can put my own added sort of spin on them. So, um, so yeah, so if you are struggling a little bit, I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad thing, we all do it. Yeah, let's uh, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get into the video. Hey everybody, how are you all doing on this beautiful day today? It's definitely kicked in with the summertime in London and yeah, it's um, it's a real pleasure to go out walking and taking photographs at the moment, even though sometimes the conditions are a little bit too good from time to time, but there are some bangers to be made. Like I said in the little intro, there is nothing worse than when you think you've taken a really good photograph and you realize that it is slightly out of focus or something just hasn't gone right whilst taking that photograph. And you know, it can be very sort of like, oh, it means I've got to throw that away or can't use it. Or are there any skills that I have within Photoshop or Lightroom to try to bring that image back? And there are, but the more you can do actually in camera on the particular location, the better. Now, of course, some of you might be sitting here going, well, you know, not all my photographs look perfect because I put my own personal spin on it. I like to, my photos to be a little bit grainy, a little bit dirty. So I actually put most of that effect during my post. A lot of my presets are very sort of like, sort of dirty and grainy and sort of, you know, I try to make them look, I don't know, like film photography, even though they're not, they are digital photos, but I do need them to be as sharp as possible for me to be able to get that effect. Because if the photograph is blurry or out of focus, it makes it look worse when I add my own personal twist on these particular photos. So I do still have to concentrate the best of my ability to make sure all of my photographs are as pin sharp as possible. So these techniques, they're not new. There's probably thousands of videos online that you can watch. So I'm not really teaching you something out of this world original. It was just sort of like something that I've noticed when I was walking around the other day and I, I did, I was just I was just pondering about really. I was just sort of jotting around, not really sort of concentrating. It was just a me day. I didn't do a video and I was just taking some photographs. And yeah, because I wasn't concentrating that much, not all of them came out very well. The steps that I go through to sort of try to make sure that all my photographs are sort of like pinch up, especially when I'm doing them for a video or I'm doing them for a client, because client work, when I'm doing headshots or portfolio shots or even stock photography, it needs to be very, very sharp for them to like it. Now I'm gonna talk about pixels first. Now a lot of people will probably sort of argue the fact that, you know, the better camera that you have, the better the photographs it will take, which is absolutely true. Without a doubt, you know, if you upgrade your camera quite a fair bit, then you're obviously gonna get better photographs as well as the lenses. But pixels themselves don't really matter. If you've got a camera like mine, which is 25 pixels, and then you've got someone else who's got a camera which is 50 pixels, it doesn't mean they are have the ability to take better photographs than you. Mainly what a pixel is, is the information that the sensor is picking up. So if you're having like a normal size photograph that is gonna be printed at a normal rate, say a A3 size poster, doesn't matter on the pixel size. But obviously if you're gonna get that picture blown up, obviously it's gonna start looking a little bit blurry because all the information that's in that particular photograph. So don't worry too much about pixels to begin with. If your work is planned to be sort of some big poster billboard stuck on the side of a bus, then yeah, pixels are important because quite frankly, that photograph is gonna be blown up as big as possible. So quite clearly, it's gonna 
lose a lot of the information, the bigger it gets. So don't worry about pixels to begin with. I think the first thing you need to understand about blurry photos, it's about movement. Movement is the biggest danger when it comes to sort of a blurry photograph. And it's not necessarily the person you are shooting. So say you are shooting somebody who's walking down a street and you haven't quite got your shutter speed going, so you've got a bit of blur on that way. But also if you're doing a landscape work or anything like that, it is generally camera shake. Camera shake is your biggest enemy when it comes to blurry photographs. Obviously I walk around quite a fair bit, so I've got my camera up in my hands and I've got to make sure it is as still as possible. So generally what I do is that if I see something that I like, I plant my feet and I get my elbows tucked right in and I make sure that my camera is as sturdy as possible. Now many photographers, and they are correct on this, to make it even better, use the eye hole. Use the sort of viewfinder to go and sort of get, gives you that extra stability. I'm not a fan of that. I don't like walking around like that. I like it a little bit further out. So maybe I could do myself a favor every now and then and using the viewfinder, but it does. Get your elbows in, because if your arms are out like this, there is still a possibility that it's gonna be smoothing. I've noticed as well that even your breathing can make the camera sort of move a little bit. So it's all about camera shake and trying to make sure your camera is as still as possible. In many scenarios, I would definitely recommend a tripod. Tripod is obviously fantastic. Get yourself a nice, big, solid tripod that you can sort of stick on the floor, somewhere solid, and put your camera on there, which you will guarantee would pretty much stop any camera shake that you actually have from sort of like ground zero, basically. That will help massively. Also, what can create camera shake is you actually pressing the shutter button. Now, if you have your tripod and every time you want to take a photograph, you hit the shutter button, there is still going to be a little bit of camera movement. So what I would recommend is that you stick a timer on it. So when you hit the shutter, you've got a few seconds to sort of stand back, let any camera shake stop, and then all of a sudden it will improve the quality of that photograph straight away, rather than if you're just sort of handhold or pressing the button to hit the shutter immediately after you've hit the button. Those little techniques will work wonders. Also, something that also help with camera shake is make sure you've got yourself a nice clean camera. If you've got sort of like a strap or something hanging off it, that again can also sort of hinder the camera, but you might not even see it with the naked eye, but the sensor could potentially pick it up itself. Especially if you're sort of on a beach and you're doing this wonderful, fantastic scenic scene of the ocean waving about and these wonderful hills in the background, it's gonna be windy. It's bound to be windy. So if you are using a telefocal lens which comes out, try to be wary that that will act as a bit of a sail. So try your best to sort of get it as solid as possible. Anything that's hanging off your camera will flap out a little bit. And even if you are using a lens hood, a lens hood could potentially act as a sort of, again, a sail that would capture the wind and move it about. Now, obviously lens hoods can be very sort of helpful, especially if you are shooting on a sunny day to try to stop sort of lens flare. But you know, these are some things if you don't need it, then obviously scrap it to one side. Also something that can also help is check the front of your lens. If you've got a little bit of dirt, a little bit of grain, a little bit of oil, you've not cleaned it properly, that could also put a bit of a haze over the photo and again, make everything look a little bit less sharp within that image. And those are sort of like the first things, the really sort of, nail down sort of materials that you need to sort of make sure your photos do in fact stay sharp every single time. Now the other side of it is of course the settings that you use. Now I'm not going to sit here and talk about the shutter speed and aperture and ISO, that's not this video. I've got videos for that and there are obviously videos out there that you can watch but of course shutter speed is very very important. The slower the shutter speed, the longer your sort of shutter is open, which means it's gonna collect more information, which means it's more blurry. Faster, completely opposite. If you wanted to catch a moment in time, bosh, like that, obviously the quicker shutter speed is what you want. And again, you've got to juggle around with the other ones. So of course, try to find a shutter speed which best suits your type of photography. One over 250 is generally good for me. It does stop time quite well when I'm doing street photography, but again, for street photography, it just gives that little bit of sort of 
animation sometimes, which gives the sort of like the feel of what the street photography is. And of course, sometimes I would definitely crank it up if I need to, if I'm doing a bit of like a, a longer shot or a bigger shot, which then I need to sort of play around with the aperture to make sure that, you know, more light comes into the sensor. Now the aperture again is also very important because say you want to get a nice cityscape or landscape and you want to get as many things in focus as possible, obviously the wider the aperture, the better the focal length is going to be. So a wider aperture, a higher number will mean that I'm in focus and also the things behind me are going to be in focus as well and potentially anything that's in front of me will also be in focus. Now of course that's not always a guarantee. You know, you might have something that's really close to the camera and something that's really, really far. So then you might have to take two photos, which means you're focusing on the front and you're focusing on the back. And then in Photoshop, you can just sort of photo stack them together and sort of blend it nicely. Good way of doing that is obviously tripod, camera in the same position, tap focus on the back, take your photograph, tap focus on the front, take the front photograph, and then just blend them in Photoshop afterwards nice and easy and you have a full fully focused photograph going forward so just keep an eye on it play around with those settings a little bit and of course iso iso is you know it's make-believe light it creates light out of nothing so of course you want to make sure that your subject is lit as best as possible and then try to keep your iso down as much as you can because iso doesn't affect the sharpness of your photo it will still be in focus it will still be perfect Obviously the problem is, is that it adds noise. It adds this grainy look to it. So it doesn't look as focused as what it should be. So of course, you wanna to try to keep that down as much as you can. Now, you're probably asking is, if I do have a blurry photo, is there anything that I can do in say Photoshop to try to improve it? Yeah, in a way, slightly. Of course you do have those sort of like clarity, texture and sharpening sliders. But again, remember, that's probably where pixels will come in a little bit more because it's it's gathering information that's not really there or it's trying to sort of dictate the overall look of the photograph. That's mainly sharpening, definitely. Like it will try to sort of harshen up the edges. And yeah, if you've got more pixels and more information in your photo, it will probably look better, but nothing can make your photos look sharper or better more than doing the hard work whilst you are taking the photograph. So of course, go into Lightroom, try your best to fix the problem, but if you've already spent the time and effort on the shot itself, you won't need to sort of play around the settings in your photo software. Not necessarily Lightroom is the only one, there are obviously more, but of course you can get a lot better. But guys, I'm gonna leave that right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been pretty much just talking at you, but you know, I've noticed recently that my photography has downgraded a little bit because I don't do it as often. And I thought I would sort of kick myself up the backside to get better at it again. And then I thought I'll bring you on the journey with me. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you know what to do. Give it a massive thumbs up just down there. And if it's the first time that you've seen me and you enjoyed this video, then consider subscribing to the channel. I'm on the race to a thousand subscribers and I want you to be part of it as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's me done for this one. I've got a lot of work to do this week. I'm shooting my next movie at the end of the week. So I'm really looking forward to that. And there will be a vlog all about it soon guys. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the sunshine if it is sunny outside where you are. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.